So we're gonna look at, can we identify some linear functions today? Um, for a linear function, they tend to have a constant rate of change, which means it's another word for slope. Uh, and when we look at that, it's the change in the dependent variable divided by the change in the independent variable. So we'll talk more and more about that and look at that, but first we're gonna look at, can we identify linear functions from their graphs? from ordered pairs, from an equation. And so if I look at a graph, linear, the root word of linear is line. And so where I have a nice parabola here, and a, yes, it is a function, it's gonna pass a vertical line test. In fact, they all are, but it's not linear. It's not a line. This is a curve in it, so it cannot be a line. So this is nonlinear. All right. If I come over here, well, these are straight, right? But uh, again, it's not a line, it's a combination of lines. And so it's, uh, this would also be nonlinear, despite the fact that it's made of line segments, it has to be a continual line. It has to have a constant rate of change. So the only linear graph that we have is here, all right? There has to be just a line on it. So I think it's pretty easy to tell from a graph if something is linear or not. Let's look at, can we tell from ordered pairs? So, all right. So let's jot these down real quick. All right, so when we look at ordered pairs, we're gonna come back up to here. We're gonna say that the constant rate of change is the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable. If you remember, the dependent variable is the y value. And so if I look at my first one here, um, change, so to go from six to eight, I'm gonna add two. To go from eight to 10, I'm gonna add two. 10 to 12, plus two, plus two, all right? If I look at my x values, they also go up by plus two. So I don't need these to change in the same rate themselves, but I do need it to be constant. So the change in my dependent value is two over the change in my independent value, which is two. And does that continue all the way through? So it does, so this would be linear. All right. Uh, and pretty much if you see that there's a constant change in Y and that X is going up incrementally, uh, you, know, you have a pretty good idea that it's going to be linear. If I look over at my middle one, uh, my x values are gonna go up by two, just like they just did. And then I look at my y values. To go from 16 to four, I went down by 12. Four to zero, down by 12. And then up by four, and then up by 12. Oh, whoops, this should be down by four, sorry. All right, and you can see that I don't have a constant rate of change in my Y values, all right? And even though my X values are being continual. So this would be nonlinear. Now, <clears throat> let's go over to this next one. To go from negative two to zero, I'm going to go up two. Zero to three, up three. Three to five, up two. 
Well, they don't go in the right order. The, my X values aren't constant, but let's look at the Y. Plus four, plus six, plus four. So as I look at the first, from to go from the first ordered pair to the second, my change in my dependent over my change in my independent was four over two. So four over two equals two, all right? The next one, it was six and three. Six over